Welcome everyone, my name is Snoo, and this is it, the big video, 1000 Crimson Temple maps, my findings, my experience, uh, the grand summation of everything, everything you could ever want to know about what that experience is like, overall, good, you know, TLDR, it was a good experience, and I want to share that with you, I decided, much like last league cemetery 500 map test run, that I would go ahead and up the production value a bit, and show you a nice sizable highlight reel every single apothecary drop every single seven years bad luck but not every single enlightened drop because that would have made the video too long as it stands i'm gonna try in one take to talk for roughly 30 minutes about all kinds of different things so let's get into that uh the first uh, i think i'll discuss my inspiration for this test as most of you are aware if you're a returning viewer a big part of my content is about currency earning strategies and a big portion of those videos feature divination card target farming. Lastly, I got a little bit of pushback on this. Uh, people thought it was a, I was a kind of out of line for suggesting that a brother stash target farming strategy could actually be lucrative, let alone the most lucrative thing you could you could do. And I like to think that I turned a few heads and I proved that I knew what I was talking about in that video. Uh, I decided this time to go a little bit deeper on the data, and I even made a spreadsheet that I will show with you guys later on in the video. Uh, but I very, very much enjoy this style of farming, so I was both excited and a little bit dismayed when they came out with the Apothecary card. Uh, dismayed because I thought, you know, Mage Blood deserved to be an ultimate, uh, an ultimately very challenging item to get. Couldn't, shouldn't really have its own divination card, but uh, a lot of people felt like it should. Or at least somebody did, so they made a divination card for it. Paid good money for it, so I guess that is what it is. And that meant that I would have a new map to farm wherever that divination card dropped and ultimately dropped in Crimson Temple. By the way, we also think it's probably dropping in the Defiled Cathedral, but don't take my word for that. That's not 100% confirmed at the time of this recording. Anyway... I found my way farming the Crimson Temple fairly early on, but I didn't want to farm it too much because I knew I was going to do a major test run like this one to see what the drop rate was in comparison to the Brother's Stash, at least, and kind of see what kind of currency results we can make from that. I think you'll all be interested to hear that, uh, what it is. So let's get into kind of the video breakdown here. I'm going to start with recognizing some of the other farms of this league, the most popular farms, ones that surrounding the new league mechanic. It was actually quite popular as far as a currency earning strategy in and of itself. Uh, we're definitely going to talk about my build, at least in short order. We're going to talk about my strategy for this test run. That's going to be kind of important, relevant to the information at hand. Then we'll get into the results, the spreadsheet that I have attached, and I'll let you guys see all that. We'll also talk about any sort of major discoveries, golden nuggets, and a few big big pieces of information I think you'll want to stick around for. Also, my anticipation for the next league. 3.19 is coming out, and the live reveal is actually coming out tomorrow. Unfortunately, I, I kind of wanted to wait to record this until then, but at the same time, I kind of want to keep my mind fresh, clean slate. I don't want to have to try and process too much stuff. Also, I, there's a lot of content I'm producing right now. I'm going to be coming out with a build guide. Uh, here fairly soon and I got a lot to do before the league ends officially and so I'm just gonna put that out there so keep, please keep that in mind there might be some things that I say uh, regarding anticipation for next league that's a little bit off base it's because I haven't seen the live reveal we have seen um, the manifesto and gotten a fair bit of new information but we haven't seen patch notes in the live reveal yet Behind the scenes is the last thing I'm going to talk about. There's some things going on behind the scenes for me professionally as far as content creation. I, I, I think I'm going to use this video to kind of share some of that stuff. It's a good time to do that. This is essentially closing the league, uh, my league experience video after all. So here we go. New farms of 3.18 Sentinel League. I felt like Palsteron was probably the MVP of this league. I came out with the new Sentinel and Go strategy. He didn't necessarily create the strategy, but he certainly popularized it with his uh, content on YouTube. Uh, it is a strategy on the Glacier involving Pandemonium Sentinels and Stalker Sentinel, and it basically just exclusively involves uh, farming the front end of the map for Sentinel rewards, and almost to my disbelief, you could farm up to about 10x an hour, and I did replicate that myself. Uh, I typically got 8 or 9x an hour. 
at the time I didn't have impeccable gear when I did that farm, but with you know mediocre gear, I was able to pull eight, nine, almost 10x an hour doing it. And that's extremely impressive for a league mechanic just by itself uh, to be able to do that much currency. Uh, for that. And we also had, uh, even before that, we had Pandemonium Sentinels while doing Legion. So Legion was a, a popular league mechanic. It's always a pretty popular league mechanic, very lucrative in its own right. And then Pandemonium Sentinels were kind of hard to manage because they were very dangerous to use, but you could use them on stasis prison monsters on Legion, uh, at least until GGG uh, fixed that, <laughs> we could say. Uh, now, I still came out with a Legion on Legion strategy. Uh, that still, for me, worked even after that fix. Uh, I don't think it was all that popular. It was actually quite a challenging strategy. So it didn't build a lot of steam, but at least that was an interesting strategy. And for the record, it was my favorite strategy. Uh, maybe because I created it, but uh, it, it was certainly the one I would have loved for to have been the most lucrative strategy, but it just couldn't possibly uh, shape up to what Crimson Temple had to offer. Uh, let's see. Then we also have... Apex, City Square, and potentially other map layouts that have multiple bosses. Uh, Apex Sentinels weren't really popular at all early on. They kind of gained some popularity later on as people got stronger builds, stronger characters. Uh, but, but all three, or all four of these strategies mentioned, involve Sentinel League, very much so. Uh, you'll remember last League, Expedition was really the most popular thing you could do, and it was highly lucrative. But Gwenin, unfortunately, has fallen out of favor this league for obvious reasons mage blood can be acquired by a divination card now so expedition uh, while still decent definitely not as lucrative as it was and i know that for certain because my reroll currencies weren't selling for anywhere near as much as they were last league yeah so next let's uh, get into my build so just like last league I decided to run the goal. I really like shrines. Also, shrines or domination is on the Atlas crafting bench from Kirik. And so shrines was sort of a, a, a premier option for a, as a strategy. Uh, being able to guarantee not four, but eight different shrine effects with longer lasting, lo greater increased effect on it. As well as any gloom shrine sections that you use as well as the additional shrine that you use. Basically, I was able to guarantee up to 13 random shrine effects on a map if I wanted to, or more. And in case you weren't aware, the goal helm with 13 different random shrine effects is super powerful. Maybe even more powerful than Headhunter. <laughs> and it's right. So that is part of my strategy. Now, a lot of people use the goal in, as a sort of stepping stone to building a stronger character. I do like using it for that, but I prefer using it actually on a very strong character, sort of elevating it to god status, basically. And this was actually super important this league because, unlike last league when Headhunter gave you all the speed in the world, this league we don't get that. And this league, you gotta be a little more creative if you want to move nearly as fast as you did last league with a Headhunter. So the major acceleration speed shrine played a big role in my farm and my decision to. Uh, run the strategy I did. Now I'm also using Tom's Cloak. That is, again, kind of pertains to my strategy, uh, but usually I use Darius's Defiance uh, as an armor. Tom's Cloak automatically identifies all magic items and I did make quite a bit of extra currency in that. And so the ultimate currency per hour that you see in the results, I'd say roughly 10% maybe maybe up to 10 percent of that can be attributed either directly or indirectly to my decision to wear that cloak it's kind of a lot when you when you think about it also uh beyond that we have let's see we got tornado shot got headhunter i'm on a raider not a dead eye most people run dead eye uh, when they're doing a strategy like this but i like raider at the ultimate high end level of gearing and then uh, for, for speed primarily and then i'm also running a magic finder so i run like a magic find hybrid so that does increase my results as well i have a grand total of 75 percent increased magic finder quantity not rarity don't actually have a lot of rarity on my gear is uniques farming is not really that big of a deal this league uh, but do keep in mind that the results you're seeing me get are in part as a result of 75 percent increased quantity on gear moving into the strategy and speaking of quantity, also a big thing that set my strategy apart from most others. A lot of other people were rolling beyond and, and focusing more on beyond lower pack size 
um, you know, four, five, six modded maps, maybe putting Delhi orbs on them, uh, maybe running Conquer Influence map. Instead, I, w I went for the sort of easy route and the cheaper route, in my opinion, the much more convenient route at least, uh, running eight mod corrupted maps that automatically came with a huge amount of pack size. Every single map that I ran averaged, you know, after Atlas buffs, around 50, 55%, somewhere between 50 and 60% increased pack size. Uh, and, and of course, they all had around 200% increased quantity as well, plus the quantity from Magic Find, meant that I was able to spawn way more altars than most people were. So that's a big thing that a lot of people don't wear. And I, I think that's honestly would be one of my uh, golden nuggets to, nuggets to you is uh, just how many altars I was able to spawn. I think I averaged something like four or five altars every map. I got a huge number. And because there's so many more Eldritch influenced monsters on the map, every single one of those monsters has a percentage chance to spawn an altar. And so that meant we get a whole lot of extra altars. Altars, by the way, way more important this league than they were last league. In a way, I mean, you know, the whole thing of last league was all about farming scarabs, but this league, divination cards are on altars. Not just divination cards from the Eldritch minions, but as well as the duplication chance. And so that was uh, a lot of added fun a and gave me some real weight in my decision uh, to, to focus more on or to choose a strategy that would result in more altars spawning, at least indirectly. Uh, I projected before this farm that I would see 15 to 20 Apothecary cards. Really didn't know for sure because I didn't have a huge background, didn't have a huge uh, sample test off stream to know uh, this time. But anyway, um, that's what I projected. The results are coming to you here real soon. Uh, just getting the rest of this strategy out of the way. As far as the Crimson Temple, it did evolve in how I ran it. Uh, keep in mind, I am also running a Delhi Mirror on every single map. And so I have to be careful about how I run the map to not lose the Delhi Mirror. Every time I killed a Harbinger, which is another big part of the strategy, Harbingers were involved. Uh, it does pause the mirror briefly and extend the timer. Strong boxes too, to a lesser extent. I was able to beeline for the boss, come back, do one wing on the outside, clear the, the beginning part, usually without losing much of anything, clear the other wing. And then come back and then open all the strong boxes after I spawned all the altars, after I got any sort of duplicated divination altars. And that created quite, uh, quite a good strategy in my opinion for farming. So it, it was something, I called it something like the Crimson Circuit. So basically I beeline for the boss, I come back the beginning. The Crimson Temple, in case you weren't aware, you have to run it a lot of times to really get used to it and start to like it or appreciate what it is. It's essentially a figure eight with one line that runs straight through it diagonally. The start location and the end location where the boss is, is that one line. And then it's just a figure eight on the other side. So once you realize that, you can kind of visualize in your head. You know, you took the line out, you start to run this figure eight afterwards. And, you do, and I was doing it multiple times. First time to clear the monsters, get all the altars I could. Second time to kill the harbingers and get all the strong boxes I could. And then third time to basically loot everything. And ultimately, counting time in the hideout between maps, I was able to do that in about four minutes flat on average. Do you notice that if you were to watch any of my sort of 100 maps segments that I was able to do 100 maps in about six and a half hours or six hours and 45 minutes depending on the set and that averages out to about four minutes per map and so I think most people who do this strategy aren't doing it in four minutes per map because I set up my character build wise to be able to do that uh, e even so far as to say that, that my decision to run the goal and to get to go domination in order to get as many acceleration speed shrines as I could to run through the map more quickly that all was basically because I was hell-bent on trying to get through the map as fast as possible I found that once you reach a certain level of efficiency once you reach a certain gear threshold movement speed becomes the most important stat uh, in your arsenal and especially with losing headhunters the major movement speed buffs that we got from the headhunter uh, that just makes it all the more important so let's get into the results i'm going to throw up here uh, a nice little uh screen shot you can take if you want of the excel spreadsheet uh, and i'm going to go through some of those results for you right here right now so uh once again just reiterating four minutes per map that's not counting the time it took to acquire the resources, the time it took to get the scarabs, to get the sextons, you know, did not count the time it takes to sell everything. But this is the way most people set up uh, their currency earning 
per hour strategies or their markers or whatever. Uh, nobody usually counts in the, the time it actually takes to really set up everything, but we do count the time it takes to run the map and even the time it takes in between each map. And like I said, so, so it's about four minutes per map. And then, let's see. Uh, also, 180 chaos to one exalt ratio. So here's the thing. Unfortunately, the timing of me doing this, uh, when I started doing this farm, it was like a month ago. And when I finished doing the farm, the exalt to chaos ratio is way different. So it skewed the results. So what I did is I went in and I sort of estimated what the uh, average, more like what my ultimate currency earnings were if the chaos to exalt ratio has stayed the same. And what that ultimately resulted in is me slashing 15% off of the top of all the currency iron. Because it started at 180 chaos per one exalt. But then the exalt market crashed precipitously uh, somewhere in the middle, around the third set I did, I think. Started the crash and pretty quickly found its way falling all the way to around 130 chaos per, and it's around 140 chaos uh, per exalt at the very end. So that definitely infected uh, what the exalt per hour rate was. And so I've tried to correct that uh, as best as I can. Uh, now, there's another thing that happened, a really big thing that happened is that GGG announced that Sentinel League wasn't going core. So Recombinators doubled or even tripled in value, basically on average. Now, I don't think this had such an enormous effect that it's going to greatly skew the results, but definitely probably added about five, maybe 10% total of my uh, total currency. I mean, 10% at the max. I, I did focus on farming uh, Sentinel Rewards, and actually I found, uh, surprisingly, that Sentinel Rewards uh, were, were easier to acquire the more Sentinels you ran with Sentinel Rewards. So it was kind of a self-perpetuating uh, strategy that enabled me to run extremely premium Sentinels uh, throughout most of this, and especially towards uh, the back end. So there's two pieces of information there's primarily my overall currency earnings per hour as well as sort of the divination card spread versus the currency spread of everything else uh what you'll see on that spreadsheet is that 29x per hour is about what i earned on this thing now 29x per hour is way 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 more than i earned last league on cemetery and it's not all because of the apothecary some of it definitely has to do with the fact that this league this league mechanic what yeah, it was involved and you know if, if i could if I could have tested one more thing, if I had all the time in the world to test one more thing, I would maybe do this test <laughs> again. I wouldn't do this test again, really. But imagine if I did this test again and then didn't run any Sentinels at all. We'd definitely get a clear picture uh, as to, you know, exactly how lucrative the strategy is without Sentinels. Because by my estimate, estimation, roughly a third of all, probably at max, a third, probably more like a quarter, but maybe up to a third of all the currency that I farm was at least indirectly impacted uh, by doing this sentinel mechanic and then if you see the uh, divination card break um you'll see that um you'll see that it was uh let's see it was 36 percent of what i earned was from divination card most of that from the apothecary card uh, no surprise there uh you'll see that 64 percent of it was other so imagine the other 64 percent like half of that is basically gone from sentinel rewards and you'll see that i earned uh, still approximately maybe 20x an hour if we just if we just threw sentinel league out the window this league i probably would have still cracked 20x an hour on the strategy and i couldn't do i couldn't quite do 20x an hour on the cemetery so that is saying a lot for the the potential of the crimson temple map in total 15 apothecaries found so it was nice that i actually did hit that estimated goal or at least close to it 54 seven years bad luck in total 59 enlightened and 24 dragon hearts so this has some serious ramifications here. Let's take a look at this. So I have 15 Apothecaries, 54 Seven Years Bad Luck, 59 Enlightens, 24 Dragon Hearts. I suspect the Enlightened card and Seven Years Bad Luck are probably almost identical in drop rate. It does seem like the Enlightened card dropped a little more often, so there might be a slight adjustment there. Kind of like how Burning, or sorry, the Brother Stash dropped a little bit more often than Dragon's Heart, probably. <laughs> but I, su I suspect that the Seven Years Bad Luck card, for example, is between certainly between two and four times more common than the apothecary now whether i got lucky or unlucky if i got if i didn't get terribly unlucky with my apothecary drops maybe it's three to four times more common that would make sense at a rate ratio of 15 to 54 if it was three to four times more common 
Dragon Heart, only 24 dropped. Now, here's a very important piece of information. How many, uh, in a major discovery, if you will. The Apothecary card appears to be roughly twice as rare as Brother Stash, based on this finding. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, because the Apothecary is worth about six or seven times as much as Brother Stash. <laughs> so here's one of the big takeaways. If Cemetery was the most lucrative map to do before this, before the Mageblood card, well, Crimson Temple is clearly the winner now. Mageblood would have to go below 100x in order for Cemetery to even have a chance of being more lucrative than Crimson Temple. Again, this is looking at this in a vacuum now. The Cemetery does have uh, some significant advantages in terms of layout. For example, I'm not doing Legion on the Crimson Temple because it's not very lucrative uh, to do that. Even trying to do Breach, which is really good for juicing, is not very good on Crimson Temple. Uh, although you could do Breach instead of uh, Hunted Traders, which is one thing I did uh, on this map. Uh, by the way, uh, the total strategy I did and a lot of extra information will be posted in the description below. So if you want to see that, you can. But yes, I estimate the Mage Blood would have to be somewhere between 50 and 100x in order for a cemetery to outright be contest to contest with uh, Crimson Temple. Um, the other major discovery, kind of already mentioned this, but Sentinel rewards are incredibly lucrative, and I suspect that maybe roughly a third of all the profit that I made, between a quarter and a third of all the profit I made, came as a result of the Sentinel mechanic. Now, I did not, in my estimating the cost per map, I did not factor in Sentinels in here. I didn't really have to because I was able to pretty well self-sustain them. And I also sold a lot of unique Apex Sentinels, which were not counted in the total currency earnings, which would have greatly offset, you know, any sort of extra costs that it might have incurred. I did, for example, buy a few, um, few Sentinel bases for fairly cheap, Cryptic Pandemonium Sentinel bases primarily, uh, but over, other than that, I didn't really buy any Sentinels uh, to help self-sustain. I was able to sustain really good premium Sentinels, all, um, you know, high, n high number of monsters, currency rewards, divination rewards, Sentinel rewards, Sentinel rewards on almost all of them, as a matter of fact. And that was actually pretty easy to self-sustain. So that was kind of a major takeaway. So let's talk a little bit about uh, my anticipation. <coughs> 3.19. Again, I have not seen the grand reveal. I'm not sure what Lake of Calandra, what the mechanic is there. I do know that 100 plus new uniques are being released, and we've seen a few of them, what they are. Now, I'm not really interested in the ones that have been released so far, but just taking a look at it, I'm pretty excited that, uh, you know, if you notice, a lot of my gear is uniques. So if they buff really any of the uniques, I'm going to be super stoked. Also, there is some potential for other uniques to become more valuable than the ones I'm currently wearing. Yeah, so very excited on that front. Uh, again, it may be a nothing burger, but for now, I'm quite excited to see what some of those new uniques are. Uh, I do plan to continue divination card farming. It is a big part of uh, what I enjoy doing. I enjoy mapping much more than bossing. And... You know, it's like I mentioned last, the last video I made. If you're not incorporating your farm into divination card farming, at least in some way, shape, or form, you're kind of doing something wrong. You're, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot a little bit. Uh, because it is so lucrative on the side, you might as well, for example, if you're doing Legion and you're doing it on Dunes, you might as well be doing it on Cemetery and throwing in a rusted divination scarab, if nothing else. Because you will make more currency doing that. Even though Cemetery is not quite as open and not quite as good of a layout, as the dunes map is. I basically proved that just by testing it myself this past leak. Okay, so, and also, kind of the really, really big news, of course, um, in anticipation is before this league ends, I am going to come out with a new build guide. It's gonna feature a tornado shot Deadeye with Soul Thirst, and also, potentially, probably, a low life build. I still have to work that out. I'm not 100% sure if that's going to be what it is. Uh, but I know that build guides are serious business in the Path of Exile world. It can go terribly wrong <laughs> as a content creator if you make a build guide and it doesn't go well in the community. But I have taken my strides. I've been very patient. I, I, I tested this out by 
first showcasing the build this past league, I, I actually did essentially the build I'm going to make as a build guide. I already did it this league. I showcased it. A lot of people followed it. A lot of people really liked how it went. So I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to give it an honest shot. It'll be my first build guide. I'll take it very seriously. I'll make a forum post on it and everything. And, you know, I hope you guys try it out too. If not, that's fine. If you've got any advice for it, great. Love to hear it. With that new build guide coming out, and my channel growing, I'm going to segue this into things going on kind of behind the scenes. So, you guys have heard me before talk about how long it takes me to get some of the content out. I am pushing a lot of content out fairly quickly, I think. Uh, but I'm also working full time. And it's not easy <laughs> getting all that content out. Um, unfortunately, the job I have now gives me very, very little in the way of flexibility on my schedule. I don't really have um, any say in, in league start timing. To this day, I've still not really been able to choose or to, to, to have a proper league start, at least, you know, in terms of like quasi no lifing the first week, for example. Never been able to do that. Uh, I usually get like 48 hours and then that's about all I get. So what I've decided to do is I've decided to change jobs. I'm going to be working a bit less for a fair bit less. In return, I will be given much more control over my schedule, which means moving forward, I can probably take an entire week off for every league start. But I can't really afford to do that <laughs> at the same time. Uh, fortunately, the content creation thing, while you know very, very low on uh, the real life currency earnings, <laughs> is proving itself to be somewhat lucrative and you know, it's like they say in life, you're either moving forward or you're moving backward. So this is me attempting to move forward. Uh, and in the process, um, I've decided to, as you may have noticed, to start putting ads on my videos. Uh, Twitch has been taking it more seriously, started putting some ads on theirs as well. Uh, getting subscriptions on Twitch is also helpful. Uh, but I'm going the extra mile, I guess you could say. I'm going to start a Patreon as well. So the Patreon will be uh, shown to you here. And as far as incentives to Patreon, you know, it'll evolve over time. Of course, I'll do the usual where I'll post the names of any uh, supporters at the end of the video, any given video I make. Uh, but I got a good idea for it, and that is with the new build guide. You see, when I posted the build showcase, a lot of people reached out to me. They wanted to know if I could help them with their POB. And, you know, it wasn't incredibly popular. There was a number of people, maybe a couple dozen, uh, that I gave my personal Discord out to, and I helped them in the POB, and they were all extremely grateful. And I was thinking, you know, this is really great. I, I think you know, making a build guide could be good. But if I make a build guide, I may get absolutely slammed <laughs> with uh, requests. And so that's not going to work out very well uh, if I'm short on time. So what I think I'll do is I'm going to reserve the right uh, to help people with their builds as far as like one-on-one -on -one help. And that'll be for Patreon subscribers only uh, moving forward. So... You know, uh, <laughs> grats to the people who got some help for free. I enjoyed helping you out, but uh, I gotta, you know, I gotta take my time a little more seriously. I gotta figure out moving things forward. So that is, uh, that kind of concludes what I'm doing uh, behind the scene. I know this uh, highlight reel here is coming to a close here. So the last few things I'll talk about. Honestly, just want to say thanks to all you guys. You know, it's been uh, been really fun. Uh, it kind of surprises me that I can come out with ten separate videos about the same thing. And there are many of you who just watch all the content. Ten separate 45-minute videos. <laughs> and you guys uh, you, got, you guys eat it up. Obviously, it's not for everyone. Um, but there's just so many things that have surprised me about this. It's gotten incredible uh, reception to you all. My decisions to do this thing with like a job change and, and potentially take the, 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 the game, the content creation side of things more seriously... Uh, honestly, is like a direct result of the reception that I've gotten from you guys. So, absolutely, you know, from me to you, I thank you guys um, for checking out my videos every time and, you know, coming back, looking for more stuff. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, if you want to, um, if you want to ask me anything, you can always do so in the comments down below. Uh, I think uh, next league... We'll probably be doing some more of this Crimson Temple <laughs> farming stuff. 
but I'm not sure I'm gonna do a thousand map test. I don't think that's something I wanna do. I kinda wanna do this sort of thing again, but maybe like 500 map tests. Let me know what you think. What do you think I should do? Should I do uh, 500 maps or should I do uh, only maybe 100, keep the 100 thing? I think the 100, the 100 maps thing works out uh, uh, pretty well, yeah. So not too bad, not too bad for a single take. I think this is the very last card that I'm about to find here. It was a seven years bad luck. Right after finding a double divination card uh, altar, unfortunately it did not drop the card I wanted twice. <laughs> or the card I wanted. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That was what you saw right there was, let's see, it was uh, seven years bad luck, number 54. So that's it folks, the video has ended. And I'm going to go out and take a break now because that was a long recording <laughs> in one take, thankfully. And right here you see uh, my celebration of the 1,000th map. Definitely should check out that video <laughs> if you haven't uh, seen it. It was pretty funny. I decided to run a monster's treasure on the 1,000th map, uh, put on some shades and try to act cool on that. Also, uh, if you are interested in seeing something a little more entertaining, I suggest checking out the 801 to 900 maps video that one was absolutely extraordinary <laughs> in terms of uh the the results i got from farming 100 maps and the gambling portion especially not to mention the gambling portion on this last 100 map set was pretty crazy too so it's been a lot of fun unfortunately i got a lot of really bad rng coming my way leading into next league because i got really really lucky when it didn't matter <laughs> at the end of this league uh, but anyway i'm out for now again check out uh the Twitch, I'll be on. Uh, I am actually going to stream my league start this league. I, I didn't do that before, but I am actually going to do that for real. I won't be on Twitch a whole lot leading up to the start of the league, but once the league starts, I'm definitely going to be on there a lot. I am going to live stream my reaction. Not Sorry, not live stream, but post stream my reaction to the live reveal, which is coming out. Actually, probably already came out by the time I make this video, so scratch that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you again for watching. I will see you in one of the next videos. Bye.